Okay guys, today I have something very special for you. I'm going to implement an entire chapter from this book. This is Shader X2, Introductions and Tutorials with DirectX 9. And now I'm going to do it in OpenGL, of course, so don't worry about it. This book is um, actually part of a larger series called Shader X, where every book in the series is composed of a set of articles that describe uh, intermediate to advanced techniques. So stuff like uh, shadows, global illumination, deferred rendering, um, water simulation, fire, uh, lots of good stuff. The people who wrote the books are either uh, top graphics researchers or badass game developers, game engine developers. So this is definitely a, a good source of information if you want to go beyond what is uh, normally found in uh, beginner level books. So this one says with DirectX 9, but in the other books in the series, you can also find implementations in OpenGL. Anyway, you can always take the algorithm and implement it in whatever API that you're interested in. The editor of the entire series is this guy, Wolfgang Engel. And uh, the chapter for today on fog rendering was written by Marcus Newbel. Um, obviously, fog is something which is very common in open world games. So I think that uh, it will be very useful to you at uh, some point. The book came out in 2004, so it's a bit old, but I think that we can still find very interesting uh, stuff in it. The first three books in the series are actually available for free now from realtimerendering.com. And you can also find them on uh, Amazon or um, used copies on eBay, of course. Okay, so we have no less than five different fog techniques. So to make it easier for me to produce the video, I divided it into two parts. Today we have the first uh, three techniques and in the next one we will do the other two. But before we begin, I'd like to say a huge thank you to C. Kelvin, Jonathan Gill, Delium and Istvan Dudas, who recently joined the OpenGL Underground. If you too would like to support this channel, you can do that at patreon.com slash OGLDev. And now we can start. Okay, let's talk about fog in general. Fog is obviously an environmental effect. It's basically an interference with our normal line of sight. It absorbs and scatters the light rays which are reflected off of objects, so what we actually see is a combination between the color of the object and the color of the fog. Fog tends to be on the grayish side, but you know, if your game needs a pink fog, go ahead and knock yourself out. In general, the techniques that we're going to study are based on the following core parameters. The color of the fog, the distance between the camera and the pixel, stuff which is closer to the viewer tends to be more visible, and as it goes further away from us, it tends to hide behind the fog, so to speak. In some techniques, we will also use a density factor to help us tune the level of fogginess. There is such a word, believe it or not. For real-time graphics, we usually need a simplified version of the physical model, so all the techniques are going to be based on blending between the actual pixel color and the color of the fog. We will calculate a fog factor and perform linear interpolation between the two colors. When the fog factor is 1, it means that there is no fog effect, so we get the pixel color, and as the factor decreases towards 0, the color of the fog takes over. So let's take a look at the simplest type of fog, which is a linear fog. A linear fog is defined, in addition to the color, by a minimum and maximum distance from the camera. Pixels that are closer than the minimum distance have their regular color, whatever comes out of the lighting equation. Pixels that are beyond the maximum distance get the color of the fog. Everything in between is linearly interpolated between these two colors. This means that the fog factor is a fraction, where the denominator is the range between the minimum and maximum distance, and the denominator is the delta from the pixel and the maximum distance. As you can see, when the pixel is close to the minimum distance, the factor is close to 1, and as I said earlier, in that case the fog effect decreases. As the pixel gets closer to the maximum distance, the factor gets closer to zero and the color of the fog prevails. By clamping the factor to the range of zero to one, we satisfy the requirement of no fog below the minimum distance and only fog above the maximum distance. Now before we take a look at the implementation, I'd like to say that I've implemented all the five techniques in the fragment shader because it was simpler and more straightforward. 
The original implementation, however, did it in the vertex shader and had the rasterizer interpolate the fog factor across the triangle face. As you shall see, the computation in some of the techniques is not trivial and you may want to experiment and benchmark it for your target platform in order to decide the best location for you. I've added the fog calculations to the same lighting program that we've been developing for quite a few tutorials but let me show you what you really need in order to integrate it into your own shaders. You will need to output the world space position from the vertex shader. For this, we simply provide the world matrix and multiply it by the local position. In the fragment shader, we will need a few uniform variables. A world space position of the camera, the minimum and the maximum distance for the linear fog, which are called fog start and fog end here, and a fog color. The color is initialized to zero and this is used as an indicator when the fog effect is disabled. At the end of the fragment shader we check if the color of the fog is not zero and in that case we call calc fog factor. Right now this function is just a wrapper for calc linear fog factor but we will add the other methods here as well. Calc linear fog factor starts by calculating the distance from the camera to the pixel in the world which is the length of the vector between the two points. Now, in the book it was done a bit differently. Marcus transformed the vertex from local space to view space and used the Z component of the result as the distance from the camera. This means that all the pixels on the same Z line are getting the same fog factor. In my implementation, this line is actually a circle around the viewer. I'm not even sure if the difference is actually noticeable. I did it this way simply because I already had the world space position available, so this was the least amount of effort. This is just another thing that you may want to play with. Next we calculate the range between the minimum and maximum distances, as well as the delta from the pixel position to where the fog takes over. The ratio between them is the fog factor, exactly as we saw in the equation earlier. We clamp the factor to the range of 0 to 1 and return it all the way back to the main function. We use the GLSL function mix to perform linear interpolation between the fog color and the pixel color. This piece of code is common to the other techniques as well. The result looks very nice and this is probably one of the simplest methods that you can use to add a fog to your scene. Alright, the second fog technique is the exponential fog. As the name suggests, this type of fog increases exponentially, rather than linearly, as we move away from the camera. We calculate it as 1 divided by the exponential function of the distance from the camera to the pixel, multiplied by a density factor. The density factor is simply a number that allows you to tune the fog effect up or down, and it's very useful for this specific type of fog. Now if you're not familiar with the special number E, that's perfectly fine. E, also known as Euler's constant, is the base of the natural logarithm. Without going too deeply into math here, it is suffice to say that the exponential function, where we raise E to the power of some other number, has been found to be very useful for many applications in physics, chemistry, and economics. Specifically, whenever a quantity grows or decays at a rate which is proportional to its current value. We're actually using the reciprocal of the exponential function and we can see that when the distance between the camera and the pixel is zero, the fog factor is one, which means no fog. As the distance grows, the factor drops sharply. The exponential fog starts from the position of the camera, so we will use only the maximum distance and the new uniform for the density. In the calc fog factor function, we check if the minimum distance is negative, and if it is, we call calc exp fog factor. This is just a simple heuristic that allows me to support multiple fog techniques in the same file, and is not really a part of the actual algorithm. This function starts by calculating the distance between the camera and the pixel, same as before. We don't want to plug the distance directly into the exponential function because we want to control the expansion of the fog using the maximum distance. Therefore, we divide the camera to pixel distance by the maximum distance and this gives us a fraction which is exactly 1 when the pixel is at the maximum distance. Notice that when we raise e to the power of minus 1 we get about 0.3678. But if we raise it to the power of minus 4, we get 0 
Remember that we want the factor to be around zero when the pixel is roughly at the maximum distance. So by multiplying the ratio by four, we get something which is close enough. Since the exponential function is so useful, it is part of GLSL. We call the internal function exp on the product of the distance ratio and the density. Don't forget to make this a negative to get the reciprocal of the exponential function. If you run the demo of this tutorial, you can press 0 for no fog, 1 for linear fog, and 2 for the exponential fog. Notice how the exponential fog effect begins much closer to the camera. We can do a simple change to the exponential fog and get very pleasing results. Enter the exponential squared fog. Instead of raising e to the negative power of the distance times the density, we actually take the square of the distance times the density, also negative of course. Take a look at the graph that compares the two versions. The exponential squared function drops more sharply closer to the camera, so we get less fog here, and levels off a bit as the distance to the camera increases. You will see in a minute how this translates visually. As expected, the implementation is very simple. We just need to multiply the parameter to the exp function by itself. I've also added a boolean flag so that the application can toggle between the exponential fog and the exponential squared fog. Press 3 for the new version. As you can see, the results are very nice and I think I like this one the most. Thank you. 